Right, so here's the new compost pile starting off. And these are wood chippings, shavings from the dogs, the terriers and the kennels. I don't use them on my dogs anyway. And the, the dogs will go up and pee on it, which is great. They'll accelerate the breakdown. So basically, if you're getting into the earth, you're, you, you want to do a compost bin or heap. Put in your brown material, cardboard. Um, just take all the sellotape off, stickers and stuff. Let them break down and just layer, layer your cardboard, then layer your green stuff. Leaves, grass, these like soft branches, they'll break down. Um, the wood shavings, they're going to take longer, but they're very light anyway. And the more you mix it up, the faster it's going to break down. So just layer like a cake, green, brown, green, brown, green, brown, green, brown. And I had a lot of these wood shavings last year in this compost here a lot of worms in there as well but what I've, I've done was when the when it was all over this side uh, clearing all nettles and grass and weeds I relayered the whole lot to get more green material in so, um, you want your compost to damp it shouldn't be really dry because the damp um, and the moisture that's retained in the, the green material when that breaks down it's going to generate heat and that helps to break down the brown material okay and what you want like in any plant food is your NPK okay they're the minerals for root growth leaf growth um, healthy plants above and below the soil and vegetables as well um, and but you want to protect it you don't want to leave it open you don't leave your compost heap open to the elements because you'll you'll build up uh, a compost heap the heat won't build up because it's opened up and it's going to get too wet if it's too wet the heat won't build up and you want the heat to build up to break down the materials and to sterilize any of the weeds and seeds that are in there okay so put a cover over it put some sides on it and um, I've left the front open here just for ease of access but I could easily put a, a tarp or something if it gets really bad so what I will be doing is I will be starting to take temperature readings um, from the heaps to check that they're breaking down another thing is when you're building up your compost heap put put down uh, tiles or slabs now here I've put in concrete and I've concreted around the posts so this whole area is concrete and basically that's to stop any leaching at the lowest level from going back into the soil so it's going to be retained um, and because the roof is on it the MPK is the minerals that the plants are going to need they're not going to be washed out so put a hard surface underneath stop any leaching back into the ground and put a cover over it to stop it being washed out If you find that your compost heap is too dry, just get your your hose and sprinkle it onto the the dry material. You don't need too much. You don't want it, you don't want it saturated. That will help generate heat, that moisture. 
And I'm just gonna layer up this green stuff now. These are off the fig tree. Anything green at all, whatever, leaves. Also, when the big chop was coming now for all the, the cannas and bananas and stuff like that, it'll all be going into uh, these beds. So when the next dry level goes on, put some cardboard on, and it's all starting to compress. Take that label off. This will help generate heat. Now the heat is vital. I'm not too sure what the temperature range is supposed to be. But you want to sterilize all your weeds and then use the seeds from the weeds. That's why it can be a mistake from just getting uh, cow manure that's, and I've done it myself in the rose garden. Um, you can get mountains of cow manure or horse manure to be left outside. But all the weeds and the seeds that the horses or the, the livestock have eaten they're still they're still active in the manure and once you plant them up they're going to come back again into your into your garden so to stop the weeds and that's how I introduced all that bindweed into the front garden which was destroying the rose garden and I had to try and dig out as much as I can and um, that's why I put the mypex down to the cover and planted the rose through the mypex was to stop the bindweed because I, there was so much of it in the manure and I would put in tons of manure that it, it actually de destroyed the uh, the rose garden. Right, another thing about using cardboard, obviously this is plain cardboard, there's no print, there's no colours on it. Um, and that's the ideal cardboard that you want to put in. Um, but if it does have ink, it's not going to matter because if it's going into plants, into the ground where trees and shrubs are, it doesn't matter if there's ink on the cardboard. Um, where I would suggest not using cardboard with ink is if you're going to be putting your compost and you're making compost with cardboard and inks and stuff is into vegetable beds with food that you're going to eat. So if you're going to be making up a vegetable bed, you want plain cardboard with nothing on it. So the ink is not going to be passed into the soil. Um, there's not going to be any uptake by the vegetable roots. And you're not going to consume the ink. So if you were doing vegetable beds, this plain stuff is great. But because it's just going into the plants and the trees and stuff like that. It won't matter if there's ink. Just make sure you peel all your your cellotape off. 